Section 3.5 Making Ammonia There are three main bits to this section knowing the key details of the process, understanding the effect the conditions have on the process, and explaining why the conditions used are a compromise to reduce the energy demands. You need to know a lot about the harbour process. Nitrogen from the air and hydrogen from natural gas react at about 450 degrees Celsius and 200 atmospheres pressure. An iron catalyst is used. Make sure that you can write the word equation, the balanced symbol equation, and give the conditions needed for this reaction. Questions on this are generally well answered on the C3 paper. The gases enter the reaction chamber and stay in there until they get to the equilibrium mixture and we'll explain this in more detail a little later. The mixture of ammonia with unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen is cooled and the ammonia condenses to form a liquid. This is collected and the unreacted gases are recycled. If an exam question asks about this don't forget to say which gases are recycled Candidates often just say the gases are recycled rather than the nitrogen and hydrogen gases are recycled. Now we need to look at equilibrium and how the reaction conditions affect the yield of ammonia. Yield is the amount of ammonia that's made. Everything from this point on in section 3.5 is higher tier only. I hope you remember from C2 that a reversible reaction can go both ways. Reactants can form products and products can form reactants. If this reaction is left in a sealed container for long enough, it will get to the point where the ammonia is reacting to form nitrogen and hydrogen as fast as it is being made. At this point, the amount of nitrogen, hydrogen and ammonia in the mixture won't change. The reaction is at equilibrium. This does not mean that the amount of each chemical is the same. The equilibrium mixture could be nearly all ammonia or less than 1% ammonia. The actual percentage of the mixture that is ammonia will depend on the conditions. And we're going to look at why that is. If you change the conditions of a reaction at equilibrium, then the reaction will try to do the opposite of what you have done. Think of it as a stroppy younger brother or sister. So if you raise the temperature, the reaction will try to reduce the temperature by doing more of the endothermic reaction. In this reaction, making ammonia is exothermic. So Going back the other way, making nitrogen and hydrogen is endothermic. The higher the temperature, the more of the endothermic reaction, making nitrogen and hydrogen. To make more ammonia, an exothermic reaction, you actually need to use lower temperatures. So to answer the exam question, why does a lower temperature make more ammonia? you should say that a lower temperature will increase the yield of the exothermic reaction and making ammonia, or the forward reaction, is exothermic. Don't mix up the yield with the rate of a reaction. They are two separate issues. The yield is what percent of the equilibrium mixture will be ammonia and the rate is how long it takes to get to an equilibrium mixture when you can take the mixture out of the reaction container. 
The same is true of pressure. If you increase the pressure, the reaction will try to reduce the pressure. The way it can do this may not be quite as obvious to you as it was with temperature. You may want to learn the rules shown here, but I know that many of you prefer to understand things and remember them better when you do so. If we look at the nitrogen and hydrogen at the start of the reaction, we can see that in the equation there are three molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of nitrogen. If we were to get all the nitrogen and hydrogen to form ammonia, we would have two ammonia molecules. So if all the nitrogen and hydrogen molecules turn into ammonia, we will have fewer molecules in the same size container. Fewer molecules of gas in the same volume means a lower pressure. The number of molecules in a container determines the pressure, not the number of atoms in the molecule. So nitrogen and hydrogen turning into ammonia will lower the pressure. The rule is that increasing the pressure favours the side with fewer molecules of gas on it, because this will reduce the pressure again. So, if you increase the pressure, this will favour the forward reaction, or you could say favour making ammonia, as there are the least number of molecules on the product side, or you could say the ammonia side. A catalyst is also used, but this doesn't affect the yield of ammonia at equilibrium. That is there just to speed up the reaction, and that's the next thing for us to look at. Rates of reaction were covered in the C2 module, so if you need to revise this, then you could look at section 2.4 again. It's worth thinking about what this means in an industrial process. The reacting gases are put into a container to be heated. They go through the container and are removed once they have had time to get to equilibrium. The slower the reaction, the longer they'll need to stay in the container. You might get a fast rate with a low yield. The mixture gets to equilibrium quickly but only a small percentage of the mixture is ammonia. Or you could get a fast rate with a high yield. The mixture gets to equilibrium quickly and a high percentage of the mixture is ammonia. Now we need to look at what conditions are actually used and evaluate why. So far, we found out that to get a high yield of ammonia, we need to use a low temperature and a high pressure. In an exam question, you don't need to give any values unless you're asked what temperature you actually used. We also worked out that to make our ammonia quickly, we need to use a high temperature and a high pressure. Clearly, we can't use a high and low temperature to get lots of ammonia quickly, so we need to make a compromise. 450 degrees Celsius is not very high, but it's not a cold room temperature either. This temperature gives a reasonable yield of ammonia at a good rate. Pressure is easy. We need a high pressure. I suggest a billion atmospheres would be ideal, as this is definitely very high. Clearly, this isn't the pressure used. We also need to consider how much energy we need to use to make this high pressure. The more energy we need to use, the higher the cost will be. A pressure of 200 atmospheres is a compromise between a high pressure making lots of ammonia quickly, but a high pressure being more expensive. In past exams, candidates have got into a tangle trying to explain why 450 degrees Celsius or 200 atmospheres are the conditions used. So tackle yield, rate 
and cost separately. If you're asked why a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius is used, then you could say a higher temperature would make a lower yield of ammonia, but a lower temperature would be too slow. A higher temperature would also be more expensive. Catalysts are very important. Although they don't affect the yield of ammonia at equilibrium, they do mean that you get the equilibrium mixture much more quickly. Often, what a company does is to use a lower temperature than they would need to without the catalyst. Whilst this might mean that the rate isn't any faster overall, the lower temperature that's used reduces the cost of the fuel needed and it increases the yield of ammonia. That's it for making ammonia. Now we're going to look at alcohols, carboxylic acids and esters.